good afternoon everyone. It's day three of the Hurricane Awareness Tour. We have now arrived in New Orleans and I'm here with meteorologist in charge of the local forecast office here, Ken Graham. I'm Dr. Rick Knapp, director of the National Hurricane Center. Ken, what a turnout. What a fantastic event. You know, you, you look at all the faces, you meet all the kids, and they're looking at the planes and learning about weather. You can see it's just excitement about everyone being here. What a way to have preparedness. Okay? You, can, you can look at just simple preparedness items, but to live it and see it, that's really the way to get the message. Yeah, and before we take a tour of what's going on here today, Ken, I want to personally thank you and your staff for the months of work to get us to this point. Putting on these events is no small task. Thanks for everything you guys do. Not just getting ready for this event, but all the coordination and partners. Absolutely right, Ken. You know what, I gotta thank you all too, because uh, without you being here, we wouldn't draw all the crowd. So it's wonderful that you're here, bringing, the, bringing your team and everything. So we thank you for being here. Thanks. Well, in all honesty, the planes are cool. The crew members are even cooler. That's really the big draw. But you have some other toys here that people are proud. Who are the partners here? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, we, we can't do it unless we get the message out with preparedness. We have the Department of Homeland Security of the City of New Orleans are here. They brought out their command center. We can't do it without them, Rick. I mean, you know, we get the information out to them. They're the ones working with the community, working on the evacuations, working on the plans. I mean, what an important partner they are to the Weather Service and NOAA as a whole as part of our Weather Ready Nation effort. I mean, they're just a, a huge part of it here. So we're so happy to see New Orleans is here hosting and bringing out their command center. Yeah, and we spent uh, the midday hours uh, going off-site, meeting with some of these partners, and, you know, Meeting these people, these emergency managers, face to face, not only strengthens the partnership to get to know one another better, but we talked about what we're going to do together as government entities when the next hurricane comes, and hopefully what that does is give people confidence in their government that we're ready and they need to be ready. And, and that's what's so nice about this, because if you look at it, it's all levels of government. It's the federal working with the state, the state was there with us today, and the locals. you got state, local, county, parish, everybody at one. We're all in this together. I mean, look, we're all in this together. So for all of us to work together on the offseason and in the heat of the battle, this is absolutely incredible. All right, so who else is here? Yeah, we also have the old fire department there here. Um, another big partner with emergency management, but it's also fire department and police department. But the old uh, fire department's here with their command vehicle, so definitely appreciate you all being here. Uh, so that's just a really huge uh, addition to everything we're doing here. EMS, I mean, if you think about it, they play a huge role in disasters. They're always the first on the scene as we had a record year this year besides even hurricanes we've had record flooding and record tornadoes these are the folks first ones on the scene so we work with them constantly to get them also hurricane prepared because they need to understand uh, all the different products that we offer and, and you know, the ramifications we control. and a shout out to the american red cross they've yeah. been at every stop on these awareness tours uh, tell me about your interaction with them you know, they're, they're, again, they're the ones right there on the scene when you have a disaster. So we work closely with the Red Cross. They're a part of our training efforts. They're in a lot of our meetings. Again, it's this wonderful thing where you see all the different federal agencies and you get the Red Cross and others all in one room because we're a big part of uh, that response and, you know, ahead of time, preparedness. We're running together. So to be able to see them here for the, it's important. It's important that they're here. It's great. All right, we're going to head this way. Shout out to Dennis Felkin, our public affairs officer at the National Hurricane Center. He's yep. also in charge of the camera. The whole broadcast we're operating our own little network here today it's so Wonder exciting Wonder. to be able to do this <laughs> live from new orleans yes. so we, we wanted to make this tour bigger and better than ever before we're bringing two planes along for the entire tour how cool is this noaa g4 jet you know I've, I've been around uh for a long time and we've had a lot of different aircraft i've never had that never been the one with the noaa jet so this is just wonderful great opportunity to have the noaa jet here and uh really appreciate them being here for this event and that we're telling people I mean it's it's flying through the hurricane but it's also flying above it's looking at the environment around the hurricane all that comes together to fully understand what's going on with that storm yeah this is the aircraft that we send out to go around the hurricane drop all those drop signs and uh, history has shown us that we can improve our track forecast because the data going into those models and by the way it's a really really sweet ride okay <laughs> <laughs> really advanced technology and they've got the uh, uh, the tail Doppler yeah. radar, which gives us kind of an MRI of the hurricane and uh, really advanced technology that you don't have in your typical G4 jet. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, the, the crew are here and they're interacting with all the, the folks in the public, the kids, the, the VIPs, all the officials, and we're going to try to yeah, pull we one can of them aside so you can say aside. hello to the, the, the crew there. They're based at uh, McDill Air Force Base in Tampa, Florida at the Aircraft Operations Center. Uh, they have other uh, Hurricane Hunter planes, the NOAA P3. 
they have two of those. Uh -huh. That's uh, Kermit and Miss Piggy. Yes. This one's Gonzo. This is Gonzo. We've been telling the kids that. They were asking if uh, Kermit was here. We said, no, we got something better. Gonzo's here. All right. Now, we may or may not be able to get one of them because they're so busy talking with our partners, talking with the public. You can see we have some local officials here uh, meeting with them. So if you just kind of pan over here, you can see all the different interactions that are happening. And by the way, they took my son on a personal tour uh, last year. They're just great with kids. I nice. really appreciate what they do. I know who we can get. Play them one day at a time. Jim McFadden. Uh, the coolest patch on the tarmac today, 500 plus hurricane penetrations. This is Jim McFadden. We're live on Periscope through Twitter. And just wanted to let you share your experiences here so far this week on the tour. Hey, this has been a great week. Uh, great crowds, great groups of kids from the schools and the areas in uh, San Antonio, Galveston, and today again in uh, uh, New Orleans. Uh, we've enjoyed the hospitality of all the sites. Uh, it's nice to be here with our friends from the uh, 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Squadron, the Air Force boats. Uh, we do complimentary programs. We have different aircraft, each with a different mission, and we work together quite well. So everything's going great this week. It's just been delightful. When did you fly into your first hurricane? You were telling my mom uh, this yesterday. It's really cool to hear this. October of 1966, so in a few months it'll be 50 years ago. Thank you for all you've done for so many years. And your, your crew members, not only are they great scientists, great pilots, but they're so passionate about talking to folks here. That is great for yeah. Thanks for talking with us. We'll let you get back to uh, interacting with all the public. We're going to go see the other plane now, Ken. Okay. Thank you. And, uh, Thank yeah. you. Thanks. They're looking for the center of the storm, and they're looking for... What a great setting for this, Rick. I mean, this airport yeah. is so historical. Yeah, every once in a while, another airplane goes by, and we're like, what's with the noise? What is this, an airport? Oh, yeah. So let's head over and see the P-130. So, so right, you know, the airport's been operational. It's a historical airport. Lakefront Airport is one of the original airports in the, in the country, Rick. And uh, a neat little story, Amelia Earhart landed here and slept on stairs in the director's office about four months before she disappeared. This is an amazing history for an airport here. This is one of the originals and a uh, really early airport from the 1930s and into the 40s when aviation was just started. So a lot of history in this airport. It's a fantastic place to have the tour. We stopped here two years ago. Uh, it's such a great setting. And if you go inside this building, it's absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous. Beautiful. on the inside. Now, it isn't what I would say gorgeous on the inside of the WC-130, but it is really cool inside and out. It is a turboprop aircraft, unlike the G-4 jet that is a jet and it's not going to handle the water that's why it doesn't go inside the hurricane but these folks there's 10 of these at Keesler Air Force Base just down the road pretty close yeah, yeah. Mississippi and uh, this is one of them and we take this on the Caribbean awareness tour as well but now they're joining us on the domestic tour let's see if we can see what's going on yeah, wait till you see how many people are waiting to get a tour of yeah. this aircraft so Ken one thing we're trying to get across to everybody this week is there's a direct connection between the data from this plane and the personal safety of people yeah. in your county warning area. You know, it, it's critical because the more data you have, the better the forecast and, and the better the warning. So you get the information from these planes, and they go into the models, and they go into our forecasts, and if people see that information, you get a better forecast. Look at the crowd who's here today. Uh, we're into the public tour time, well into the afternoon here. This is the longest lines we've had all week. So New yeah. Orleans folks are turning out. And it's interesting, Rick, because the line actually went beyond those stairs and went further back there for a little bit. So the lines have been really long all afternoon. And what we've been doing, while people are waiting in line to see the plane and meet the crew, folks from the National Hurricane Center, your local forecast office yeah. folks, FEMA folks, have been interacting with the kids and the families in line because really what we're trying to accomplish here is give people some action items for them to do to get their families ready for the next hurricane. Yeah, it is all about the preparedness, and that's the big reason why we're here today. To yeah, let's to go talk to one of our hurricane specialists, John Cangelosi, who's been interacting with Let's go with surprise him right here. He doesn't know we're coming. What's, what's the point? Hi. We're so sorry to interrupt your conversation, but we're live on Periscope. Oh, wow. And this is John Cangelosi, one of our hurricane specials at the National Hurricane Center. He's uh, working the line here, talking with the folks in the public. John is fantastic with kids. We did a hurricane webinar Great. live from the tarmac in Galveston yesterday to hundreds of school kids around the country, fourth through sixth grade. John, tell us what that was like. It was an amazing experience even for me. So what we did is we reached out to the kids and we wanted to talk about 
hurricane history, let them know their areas are vulnerable to hurricanes, hurricane hazards, really promoting an acronym called SWIFT, hurricane hazards including storm surge, wind, inland flooding, and tornadoes, and then give them a chance to see the planes, what it's like to be on them, what it's like to, to what the planes do, what it looks like even on the plane, just a real fun experience. And my favorite part, Rick, is they get to ask questions and then we get to answer them, and they have some amazing questions sort of almost at my level of intelligence. Yeah, and they're fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. Yeah. Well, I got a fifth grader at home. I know that these kids are really sharp. Yeah. What are some of the things you're talking about with the families waiting in line here? Well, yeah, what I'm trying to do here is it's really to engage them, letting them know who does what, so that they can ask the right questions and let them know what this plane does and, and direct questions to the Air Force related to any of the questions related to this aircraft and what NOAA does and, and how the Hurricane Center does and really what the purpose of this tour is in general. Yeah, so Ken, one thing I know you worry about is how prepared are the citizens in this area? This is certainly going to help, but what worries you about uh, preparedness uh, in advance of the next hurricane? You know, I think it's complacency, Rick. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's been a while since we've had a storm, and if you think about it, I keep saying, you know, a 13 or 14 year old doesn't even remember Katrina. So it's a situation that we got a whole new generation that's trying to learn about hurricanes. They don't remember Katrina. So it's a con you have to do things like this to get out in the public to constantly remind people of the dangers of a hurricane. This is so critical to our preparedness every single year. Yeah, and one thing we're hoping that people take away from all of this is that by meeting the pilots and seeing these incredible machines and knowing that these brave women and men fly into hurricanes and they meet the government officials here from the National Weather Service, Hurricane Center, local forecast office, that they're gaining a confidence in their government and realizing that we're putting forth the best resources we can to do our job and your government's ready, but now, like I have to do for my family, my son, my wife, my home, I got to get ourselves ready. Ken, tell, tell us about your personal preparedness. This is not just a job for you, right? No, it's, it's personal preparedness. It's the family. We, we, we have the plan. We know where we're going to go. We, have, we go through the whole checklist every single year. We practice it, right? We actually say, okay, this is what we're going to do. We have an evacuation. What are you going to do? And I test them. Got a little clipboard. I mean, we, we go through the whole process. They know what we're going to do. And you know what? I can't leave with the weather service. So what happens is I need them in a safe place. So they're going to be in a safe place. They know what to do. And I'll be back here taking care of uh, the business back here with the forecast office. Oh, fantastic. Ken. John, everybody who's here, we're so thrilled that you joined us here on this live Periscope broadcast. We're really enjoying meeting the family members here. And you know what? Sometimes I get asked, who's your most important partner of the National Weather Service in this whole hurricane business? And with all these partners that you've introduced us today, Ken, you might think it's one of them. But actually, our most important partners are children. And as a father of an 11-year-old, I can tell you, the kids are the key to getting their families talking tonight about how they can get ready for the next hurricane. So thanks for joining us here on this live Periscope broadcast. Follow us on NWSNHC and hashtag Hurricane Strong. We'll see you in Mobile, Alabama tomorrow, Naples, Florida on Friday.